In this lesson, we will finish our walkthrough of Maya's animation preferences. We only have a few more options to cover. Let's go ahead and get started. So next we come to Rotation and Interpolation. So yes, we can change our rotation types right here in our preferences. So by default, we're working with Independent Euler, which means that we can offset all three rotate axes from each other as we start to animate rotation. So this is great when we'd like to quickly add more fluidity to, let's say, a character's performance. As you animate rotation, you can go ahead and block in your rotation on one frame, but then when you're ready to refine, you can start to offset your rotate keys just by a few frames, just to loosen up the character a bit and have the animation feel more lifelike. So this option allows us to do that. The next option, Synchronize Euler, keeps X, Y, and Z all on one frame, so there's no offsetting any of those channels. It really depends on your workflow. If you would like to not offset your rotation at all, well, you have synchronized Euler that you can use, but if you do like to offset your keys, you can go ahead and work with this first choice. I actually like to stick with the default because it's very flexible. Now, what is quaternion then? Well, the problem with Euler rotation is that we can run into gimbal lock. That's when two of our rotate axes overlap. We lose control in one axis, and that tends to lead to flipping because the software doesn't quite know what to do with rotation at that point. Now, with quaternion, we can get around that flipping issue because it does a great job at solving rotation. But keep in mind that it works like synchronized Euler, so there's no offsetting any of your rotate keys when you use quaternion. There are also other ways around gimbal lock. We'll have a look at that when we jump into the graph editor. So that'll be fun. Next, we come to our tangents section. So we can work with weighted tangents, which eventually allows us to free our tangent weighting to adjust our function curves in a very flexible way without having to add any extra keys. This is a really important option, so I'll go ahead and show you how to work with it when we jump into the graph editor. I don't like to use this option here in the preferences. Instead, I like to manually go in and choose what function curves should be weighted. That way, if a function curve doesn't necessarily need to be weighted, we don't have to set it to that. Because your F curves can get pretty wonky if you're not careful with weighted tangents. So we'll have a look at that later on. And then we have our interpolation types that we can choose. So these are our default in and out tangent types. By default, this is set to auto, meaning we'll have smooth interpolation. This will also help us to prevent overshoots in our function curves, where our tangents are oriented in a way where the curve kind of pushes past the value that we have set. We'll take a look at that in the graph editor. But keep in mind, we have other settings that we can choose from these two lists. Sweet. So look at that shortly. Animation blending. This has to deal with hand keyed animation, as what we have here, as well as special connections like constraints, whether connections we might make with certain nodes inside of Maya that allow us to also work with hand keyed animation. So we can choose to blend always, or we can blend between only constraints and hand keyed animation, or if you would like to not blend at all, that's what that last option does. I tend to stick with the first choice because it's more flexible. And then we have graph editor settings. So we can snap a keys value to an adjacent keys value, which can be helpful when you're wanting to kind of plant a character's foot and you'd like to quickly go in and set that key. This allows us to have that happen. Or if you'd like to rough in any moving holds, again, this option is great for that. We could also adjust our keys with the left mouse button in the graph editor. So as the cursor gets near your keys, you can start to edit the keys with your left mouse button. Normally, I don't like this option because if you're trying to select the key, you might accidentally shift a few keys that, again, are near your cursor. So be really careful about that. We'll take a look at that again when we get into the graph editor. The camera sequencer, this is really neat because it allows us to adjust our shot cameras in a way that we weren't able to do so in, in prior versions of Maya. 
So this allows us to lay out and manage shot cameras. Right here inside of the software, we can create camera cuts and things like that, which is super exciting. And here are the preferences for the camera sequencer. Oh, great. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the time slider category to finish up. So we can adjust our playback start and end time. Right now, this is set to 185. That's our animation range and the playback range. But if we wanted to adjust our playback range to, let's say, 150, take a look at what happens. Now we've updated the range slider. So we're only able to play back from 1 to 150. Take a look. If I hit play, after 150, the animation will jump back to frame 1. And that's because of looping set to continuous. If we set this to once, now when we hit play, the animation will go to 150 and it will stop. Now, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and double click on your range slider and that's going to revert back to your animation range. If you double click again, it reverts back to your playback range. And you could also go to the range slider directly and adjust the end and start handles to control your playback start and end time in a more interactive way which I tend to do. But notice you can access those settings from the preferences. You can adjust the height of your time slider. We also have a few helpful tools for the grease pencil utility here in Maya and we'll take a look at that later on. Key ticks, this is super helpful and we've taken a look at this already but notice if we want to focus on one channel at a time or multiple channels but not everything we can go ahead and control click to add more channels to our selection and there we go now we can see the translate Y Z and rotation Y as well I tend to stick with active unless I absolutely need to switch to channel box I switch to channel box when I'm ready to start polishing an animation because again it gives us control over just focusing on one channel at a time Great. You can change your key tick size. If you want to thicken your key ticks, you can go ahead and do so using this property. And then if you would like, you can go ahead and snap to whole frames, which is very helpful when wanting to get to an exact frame. Now, if you'd like to work in between frames, you can go ahead and turn off snapping. I'd highly recommend you leave snapping on until you're ready to add subtle changes. At that point, you might turn off snapping, but it's not really necessary to do that. And then time code. Time code is just a way of displaying your time slider a bit differently. So you can see here, as so we keep track of our marker, it's set to a time code now. Fantastic. So I really like these options. Despite not using snapping too often, again, it's super helpful, especially for slow-mo type animations, where we'd like to add more finesse in between frames. All right, great. And then if you'd like, you can go ahead and change the amount of frames you're able to see on the time slider using the tick span. So watch, if I were to set this to 10, now we see every 10th frame. If I set this to 1, notice we can see every frame now. If I were to set this to 0, this is a more interactive type of display. Watch, if I were to go ahead and drop the frame count, you'll notice that we can see every frame, but as we start to increase this, now, that distance starts to increase just a bit. And then we have our playback options. So watch, if we want to play back with 24 frames per second, we most certainly can. Or if we'd like to adjust our playback according to our frame rate that we've set from the settings category, we have options to do so as well. So I just wanted to point out the animation preferences. There are a lot to pick and choose from, which is great because you can go ahead and set the settings that would work best for your project. But that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to set keyframes in Maya.